1982, William Gibson coined the word cyberspace in his short story Burning Chrome. It became wider known with his other book, Neuromancer, in 1984. However, it wasn't until around 1994 when the term cyberspace became this huge buzzword that became synonymous with the internet. With internet speeds taking off and AOL making it easier for the general public to get online, the media was a frenzy of cyberspace-related stories. At the forefront was often stories about hackers. I had just upgraded my 14.4 modem to a blisteringly fast 28.8. I wasn't quite as computer savvy back then as I am now. Actually, the closest I came to hacking back then was when a college buddy would come over and we'd get drunk and troll the AOL singles chat rooms. 1995 rolls around, and we get the silly and yet entertaining The Net, the heavily William Gibson-influenced Strange Days, the underappreciated William Gibson adaptation Johnny Mnemonic, and this week's film, Hackers. On a side note, 19 years later, and still nobody's attempted to adapt Snow Crash? Idiots. Anyway, Hackers is a 1995 action thriller from director Ian Softley. The movie opens with a police raid on a house in the suburbs. They capture an 11-year-old kid named Dade Murphy, who was a hacker who called himself Zero Cool. He's taken a court over a virus he created that's crashed over a thousand systems, including Wall Street. His family has to pay this huge fine, and he can't own or operate a computer until he turns 18. It's seven years later and Dade and his mother have moved to New York. On the night of his 18th birthday... Dade is up late hacking into a TV network. As far as I'm concerned, you want to hack into a TV network? Here's how you do it. I'll get you a hot drink, miss. This is what was called the Max Headroom Incident. The guy who did it hacked the CBS broadcast signal and was never caught. Look it up, it's really interesting. While he's hacking the network, he gets a message from another hacker called Acid Burn. Dade now changes his handle to Crash Override and has a duel with Acid Burn. In typical Hollywood fashion, the duel consists of hitting the keyboard really fast and the screen filling up with all kinds of flashy crap. You know, for the world's greatest hacker, look how slow he types. Dade's first day at his new school. You have your transfer for us. It's a relatively straightforward question. Well, hello, lips, legs, breast, and ass. That's a young Angelina Jolie as Kate. She's still sexy, even though they gave her a haircut that makes her look like she's wearing a shower cap. This is also the movie where Angelina Jolie and Johnny Lee Miller met for the first time. The two got married in 1996, and then were divorced in 1999. Kate tricks Dade with the old pool on the roof gag and he gets trapped in the rain. Dade meets fellow hacker the Phantom Freak, and Joey, who never gets a hacker handle. Dade gets invited to Cyberdelia, a club where all the hackers hang out. Dade sees Kate playing this giant video game that was actually a prototype for the Sony PS1 game Wipeout. He beats Kate's score, and now she's all pissed off. That night, Dade gets revenge on Kate by hacking the school sprinkler system. Back at Cyberdelia, we meet Emmanuel Goldstein, a.k.a. Serial Killer. Emmanuel Goldstein is an homage to the character from George Orwell's 1984. Later that night, Joey hacks into a mainframe called the Gibson, which was a nod to William Gibson. Computer hacking is so much cooler in movies. I mean, look at this shit. Is he hacking a computer, or did he just eat mushrooms? While Joey's rooting around in the system, he decides to make a copy of the garbage file to prove that he was there. 
He copies it onto a floppy and hides it. The kids head over to Lord Nikon's house to watch a show called Hack the Planet, run by Razor and Blade. Back at Joey's house, he gets raided by the police who traced him from the other night. Agent Gill is the head of the government's cybercrime division. Eugene Belford is the head of computer security at the Ellingson Corporation, which was the company that Joey hacked into the other night. Belford said that a hacker planted a virus in the system that'll cause five oil tankers to capsize unless he gets $5 million. This is all really a hoax set up by Belford, who's really this master hacker called the Plague. He's been stealing money from the company and wants to set it up so someone else takes the blame while he makes off with the money. Lorraine Bracco plays Margot, and she is just the worst actress ever. Listen to her. But you've created a virus that's going to cause a worldwide ecological disaster. My God, she sucks. Murphy kid, turn you down. Pangelette's playing Hal, as in Hal from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Belford then teams up with Agent Gill. He finds out Dade is zero cool and tries to get Dade to narc on his hacker friends. This is a continuing theme in the movie. Get you kicked out of school. No colleges would take you. No future. You screw up again and you won't get into college. Like the worst thing that could happen to him is he won't be able to get into college. There's this big party at Kate's house and everyone goes. Look at that pooper, man. Agent Ray infiltrates the party. Yeah. No one suspects the middle-aged guy in the party who looks like Count Chocula. The guys head to Kate's room to check out her new fully loaded laptop. Dade finds out that Kate is acid burn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crash and burn. <laughs> Dade and Kate then have a contest to find out who's the better hacker. They do all sorts of stuff to make Agent Gill's life miserable. They screw up his credit. They give him a police record. They even put his name and phone number in a bunch of adult personals. I, I know where you can stick it. I, I know where you can stick it. I just oh. want to lick your earlobes. I want to lick your lips. Oh, I'm lick your oh yeah, you going to lick? And then I'm gonna you want to lick something? Lick ankles. this. You don't see too many guys wearing belly shirts. Joey's out of prison and he goes to give the disc to his friends. He gives the disc to the Phantom Freak, who hides it. Freak gets arrested and he tells Kate where he hid the disc. Kate and Cyril head to Dade's house to get him to help decipher what's on the disc. The group finds out that they're all going to get arrested tomorrow, so they contact Razor and Blade to put out a message to all hackers to attack Ellingson so they can go in and get the info they need to stop the plague. They set up shop at Grand Central Station. What the hell is Dade putting on his head? Is he going into the R zone? The group overload Ellingson with viruses. They find the files they need just in time before they get arrested. While they're leaving, Dade hides the files for Serial to find. Serial then hacks a TV network to explain the whole thing. Belford's trying to leave the country, but Agent Gill catches him. At the end of the movie, the guys decide that Dade won the contest. Actually, they say that Kate won, but they let Dade win because they say that it's the only way he'll ever get a date. So Dade and Kate then go out on their first official date. Wow, this movie is so goddamn silly. With all the leet speak, the goofy outfits, and the general ridiculousness of it. Look at that pooper, man. Well, it looks like I'm on top. Risk architecture is going to change everything. Yeah, risk is good. You're in the butter zone now, baby. How can you not enjoy it? The soundtrack for the movie totally kicked ass. With bands like Orbital... Massive Attack, and Prodigy. This is something I listen to quite often. As for the outfits in this movie, yeah, people really did dress like this at one point. If you haven't seen this movie, you're really missing out. Of all the movies from the 90s that I've seen, this is the one that makes me miss that time the most. Ah, tu veux sucer quelque chose. Tu n'as qu'à sucer la barre des chevilles. 